India is set to participate in the 32nd edition of the Singapore-India Maritime Bilateral Exercise, SIMBEX, later this month, reaffirming long-standing naval ties with Singapore. High Commissioner Shilpak Ambul highlighted the evolving strategic engagement aligned with India's Sagar and Act East policy. Speaking aboard INS Shakti, visiting Singapore from July 16th to 19th, Ambul underscored the need for cooperative maritime security amid growing regional threats. The Indian fleet, comprising INS Delhi, Satpura, Kiltan, and Shakti, will also visit the Philippines and Vietnam. The envoy praised past joint operations, India's role in ASEAN forums, and announced India's hosting of major naval events including Milan, IONS, and the Goa Maritime Conclave in early 2026. The visit coincides with the 60th anniversary of India-Singapore diplomatic relations and highlights India's push for regional maritime collaboration. State-owned defense equipment maker, BML Limited, has secured a fresh order worth Rs 185.65 crore from the Ministry of Defense for the supply of 79 power angling and tilting bulldozers. This development comes after the company successfully completed an earlier contract for 66 similar machines, delivering them well within the set deadline. The latest order highlights the government's continued reliance on BEML's indigenous manufacturing capabilities and supports the broader Make in India initiative aimed at strengthening self-reliance in defense production. BEML, which functions under the Ministry of Defense, operates in three key sectors construction and mining, rail and metro, and defense and aerospace. The company leadership emphasized that the deal reinforces their commitment to providing reliable, high-quality solutions to support the operational needs of India's armed forces. Following the European Union's announcement of its 18th sanctions package against Russia, India reaffirmed on Friday that it does not support unilateral sanctions and emphasized the importance of avoiding double standards in energy trade. The EU's new measures target Russia's energy revenues, banking sector, and military industrial complex, while also including sanctions on Belarus. Responding to media queries, India's foreign ministry stressed that energy security is vital for its citizens. Meanwhile, Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, stated that India has diversified oil imports from 40 countries and remains unconcerned about potential disruptions. His comments followed threats from U.S. President Donald Trump, who proposed secondary sanctions on countries purchasing Russian oil. Russia condemned the EU sanctions as unlawful and vowed to analyze them carefully to reduce their impact, claiming it has developed resilience against such restrictions. INS Nishtar, India's first indigenously designed and built diving support vessel, was formally commissioned into the Indian Navy on Friday in Visakhapatnam by the Minister of State for Defense, Sanjay Seth. Constructed by Hindustan Shipyard Limited, it is the first of two vessels, designed for deep-sea saturation diving and submarine rescue, capabilities possessed by only a few navies globally. The Minister of State for Defense praised this milestone as a boost to India's maritime strength and a symbol of the Navy's role as a regional first responder. Admiral Dinesh K. Tripathi highlighted Nishtar's operational significance, noting its advanced systems like remotely operated vehicles and deep submergence rescue features. With 80% indigenous content and the involvement of 120 MSMEs, the 118-meter, 10,000-ton vessel reflects India's growing shipbuilding expertise and its commitment to self-reliance under Atmanur Barbarat. <music> India's DRDO is developing the Panaka 4, a next-generation guided rocket system, with a range of up to 300 kilometers, scheduled for trials in 2028, and induction by 2030. Inspired by the Prelay missile, Panaka 4, will feature a quasi-ballistic trajectory and advanced mid-flight maneuverability, 
making it difficult for enemy defenses like the S-400 to intercept. With a larger 300mm caliber and a 250kg warhead, it marks a significant leap from previous versions. Precision is ensured by a high-tech guidance system, developed by DRDO's research center Emirat. It will be compatible with existing Panaka launchers, enabling smooth integration into the Army's arsenal. The development follows India's interception of Pakistan's FATA-2 in May 2025, which underlined the value of evasive missile technology. The Panaka-4 is also expected to bolster exports and India's strategic edge in the region. India's indigenous Archerengi unmanned aerial vehicle has cleared crucial low- and high-speed taxi trials, marking a major milestone in its development by the DRDO's aeronautical development establishment. These tests validated the drone's engine, airframe, brakes, and control systems ahead of its anticipated maiden flight in early August 2025, pending final airworthiness clearance from Center for Military Airworthiness and Certification, SEMILAC. Designed as a medium-altitude long-endurance UAV, ArcherNG can operate at 30,000 feet for up to 29 hours and carries a 300 kg weapons payload. Equipped for both surveillance and precision strike missions, it bridges the gap between smaller tactical drones and larger platforms like the Rustam series. This dual-role capability is part of India's push for defense self-reliance under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative aiming to reduce import dependence and enhance ISR capabilities. China called for stronger regional counterterrorism cooperation, following the U.S. designation of the Resistance Front, TRF, linked to Pakistan-based Lashkari Tayyiba, as a foreign terrorist organization. The move follows the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir, which killed 26 people and was initially claimed by TRF. While China condemned the attack, it avoided direct reference to TRF or LET, both of which were reportedly omitted from a UN Security Council statement, due to objections from China and Pakistan. India responded with Operation Sindor from May 7 to 10, launching strikes against terror infrastructure in Pakistan and POK. The U.S. designation may influence future deliberations in the UNSC's 1267 Sanctions Committee. Meanwhile, China reiterated the need for regional collaboration to preserve stability amid rising cross-border tensions. In a strategic move to boost its aerial surveillance and command capabilities, the Indian government has approved the development of six new indigenous airborne early warning and control aircraft to be delivered within the next three to four years. This project, known as Netra MK2 or AWACS India, marks a major step toward self-reliance in high-end defense systems and will be led by the DRDO in collaboration with Indian industry partners. The new airborne early warning and control platforms will be built on refurbished Airbus A321 airframes sourced from Air India. These aircraft will be extensively modified to include a large radar dome and advanced indigenous mission systems. A key highlight is the integration of a fully homegrown ASA radar capable of 360-degree coverage and tracking multiple aerial threats over long ranges. In addition to radar capabilities, the aircraft will feature electronic intelligence, secure communications, and airborne battle management tools. These assets will serve as airborne command centers, enhancing the Indian Air Force's ability to coordinate air operations and respond swiftly to emerging threats. Once inducted, the six Netra MK2 systems will significantly expand and modernize India's current airborne surveillance fleet. India's defense sector is set for a major leap in 2026, with the planned rollout of two advanced indigenous platforms, the Guttuk Stealth Combat Drone and the Tejas MK2 fighter jet. Developed by the Aeronautical Development Establishment in HAL, these platforms are expected to redefine the Indian Air Force's 
operational strategy, through man-on-man -man teaming, the Guttuck UZAV, built around a stealthy flying wing design, is intended for deep penetration strikes and suppression of enemy defenses. It will be powered by the dry Kaveri engine and can carry up to 1.5 tons of precision-guided munitions internally. Prototype fabrication by LNT is underway, with engine flight trials planned for late 2025. The IF reportedly aims to induct at least 150 units. Complementing it, the Tejas MK2, a larger, more capable 4.5-generation fighter, is slated for its first flight in early 2026. It features stealth-enhancing design, a GEF-414 engine, and indigenous ASA radar. The aircraft will replace aging IF fleets and form the backbone of future multirole missions. Together, these platforms mark a transformative step in India's air combat doctrine, enhancing both autonomy and survivability in future conflicts. India is inching closer to a landmark rupees 61,000 crore defense deal with France to co-develop a powerful 120 kN jet engine. This engine is intended for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, India's next-generation stealth fighter, and future aerial platforms, like the Indian multi-role helicopter, IMRH. The Ministry of Defense has evaluated proposals from France's Safran and UK's Rolls-Royce, with France emerging as the preferred partner due to its offer of complete technology transfer. This initiative is crucial for India, which still relies heavily on foreign-made engines, posing both strategic and financial risks. Safran, known for world-class engine technology, will collaborate with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited to design, test, and manufacture the engine in India. While AMCA's initial units may use GE-414 engines, India is committed to achieving indigenous engine capability. The proposed engine promises advanced features like supercruise and stealth performance. HAL and Safran are also jointly working on the IMRH engine. This partnership not only strengthens India's aerospace self-reliance, but also opens doors for future exports. Unlike the US, which restricts tech transfer and delays delivery, France offers aligned timelines and trust, making it a strategic long-term partner. If finalized, this deal could significantly boost India's defense technology ecosystem. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.